Erev Tovarad. Good morning, Santa Fe. Greetings to friends of Israel around the United States, around the world. My name is Wayne Firestone, and I'm the host of this webinar series that brings you reasons to celebrate, reasons to get out of bed and enjoy the day, reasons to really enjoy what the best of our creators have to offer. And today, our episode has a very special distinction because we're talking about collaboration. And uh, I like to think of collaboration as one plus one equals three. And you are going to see examples of that today in really uh, the, the most uh, exciting and uh, creative ways uh, possible. But for those of you that are joining us uh, now live, uh, if you wanna put in uh, an example of a collaboration that inspired you, it doesn't necessarily have to be in art, but any kind of uh, collaboration uh, that you've seen in business, in, in, per in your personal life, in your hobbies, and in other aspects of, of, of your life where someone doing something alone was simply not enough. So we're looking forward to hearing about your collaborations today, and we hope you'll be inspired by the collaborations we're gonna to present to you today as part of a program known as ROLO, sort of rolls off your tongue. And I think you're going to see uh, really some very inspiring art today. We are so pleased to be bringing you this episode of our webinar as a continuing partnership with the uh, Consulate General uh, of, in New England. We have the Consul General of, New, of Israel to New England with us, uh, the seasoned ambassador, Marone Rubin. He's a uh, three-decade career diplomat from Israel who served as the ambassador to Paraguay, to Bolivia, to Colombia, and also as ambassador to the United Nations. We're so thrilled to have him back here on our program again. So Ambassador um, uh, Ruben, please tell us a little bit about this program and why you're smiling today, because I know it brings you a lot of joy, uh, this program uh, that we're doing. Well, Wayne, I'm smiling because I'm already out of bed, so I presume that's uh, a good, thing. <laughs> good start. Uh, and shalom, and really thank you, Wayne, and all the staff uh, on the, uh, who who work so diligently uh, behind the scenes to to help uh, move uh, things uh, forward. Uh, so first, uh, uh, shall we say a good uh, afternoon, actually, from Boston. A good morning to uh, the central and uh, west coast in the United States. A good evening. Uh, to Israel, uh, all of you joining, uh, and of course the Israeli audience and other audiences, and it really is a pleasure as usual to be with you. Uh, unfortunately, we're still on this virtual uh, Zoom uh, connections, but maybe to connect people from all over the world, it's the best way to go. Uh, so <clears throat> we're here to discuss and celebrate a very special part, project uh, that we've been part of. This is the Rolo uh, Tel Aviv Boston Art Collaboration. Uh, and uh, really, uh, I think it's fantastic that you've been able to uh, uh, help uh, give a voice to this project, which I think is so uh, fantastic. And thanks for the leadership and thanks for the fostering the wonderful relations between Israel and the United States. Uh, I'd also like to thank, of course, the, the artists who took part in it, the curators uh, who took part in the exchange, and especially to uh, 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 Maclina, to Anna, to Tracy, and to uh, Eden, uh, who are joining us uh, today, as well as to the Rolo team, uh, who've worked uh, day and night uh, behind the scenes. So really, that's great. Uh, our consulate, as you said, is very proud to support this first uh, US uh, edition of Rolo. It's a concept that's been uh, successfully carried out around the world from London to Istanbul. And uh, we definitely believe uh, that this is a prime example of cultural exchange, which helps bridge the differences between the people, uh, the artists and the countries. And we wish it would be even more widely implemented in the future. And we'll do our utmost so that that actually happens. 
Um, now, a specific undertaking, uh, this one, this uh, Rolo Boston Tel Aviv, it was initiated as part of our consulate's commitment to addressing the rising uh, hate crimes and anti-Semitism in New England and across the uh, USA. And uh, the exchange uh, uh, centers around the themes of belonging and uh, longing, and it cultivates a deeper dialogue about inclusion, uh, culture and identity between the artists from both uh, uh, Tel Aviv and Boston. So uh, they're working with uh, local and fantastic curators from both sides, uh, McLena and Anna, and uh, we'll make sure that we provide exposures. They, they're making sure that they provide exposures for the artists of diverse backgrounds and various disciplines. Uh, and uh, this is what is so fa fantastic about uh, the two rounds of Rolo, that uh, there are uh, always new artists and new connections. Uh, and finally, of course, I'd like to thank uh, the Cultural Affairs Department led by Amir Tadmor uh, for bringing all of the pieces together and uh, making this sort of uh, artistic vision uh, come true. And I invite you also to visit the digital exhibition and to enjoy uh, the remarkable artwork. And Todaraba, and thank you, everybody, and enjoy. Thank you, Ambassador Ruben. We're so excited to uh, 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 learn about the project by actually having the artists uh, share their works uh, with us today. Anna Berg, the co-founder of this amazing project, Rolo, uh, co-founder uh, with uh, a partner who we're going to meet virtually on a, a video in a moment, Uriah. And I, I just have to mention from your bio, uh, uh, you're, you're a cultural journalist, which itself is an interesting um, uh, uh, profession. And we're interested in hearing your perspective as a cultural journalist. But I know you studied in London at Goldsmith University and did a master's thesis on artificial intelligence in creating fiction. So um, I know we won't have time to delve into it uh, uh, today, but tell us about Rolo and how this is something only humans could have come up with. Uh. <laughs> Well, what an introduction. Thank you. First of all, thank you everyone for having us here at, the, at this great um, talk show. And thank you, Ambassador, for your kind words. And I have to say that only humans can do it. And this is how Rollo began. So before I start explaining a little bit about what Rollo is, uh, should we watch um, our co-founder, co Uriah, uh, in a short video explaining about the project? Sure. Let's uh, uh, let people uh, see the, whole, the, the, the beginning origins of this. Well, with apologies on the audio, we're definitely seeing the origins of this, but not necessarily hearing. So why don't you go ahead and talk yeah. over it and, and let us know a little bit about the project's background. Yeah, so I think it's very important to know how Rolo began because um, back in the first lockdown, it seems like history, but it wasn't that long ago, two years, um, four, four friends from Tel Aviv, myself, Uriah, the, the, the man that you just saw, um, Shira and Oded, um, we felt very lonely, we felt very isolated, just as everyone else. And we understood that our um, initiative to have cultural salon events in Tel Aviv uh, was over because of COVID. And we have not, we, we don't have any other ways to now meet new people and truly connect to them because we are all locked down in our um, houses. And we thought, how can we create a real deep communication and a meaningful conversation between strangers? Because uh, we always curious to know other people and to learn from other people. Uh, and this is how we invented Rolo, which first of all is a game. And it's, I think first um, goal is just to bring some joy and some fun to our um, daily to our daily life, and the idea is very simple. It's kind of a pass it forward um, format where uh, we as curators uh, choose one topic, one word, then we pass it forward to an artist, and this artist have twenty four hours 
that's it, to create a new artwork inspired by the word that we've given to them. Now, when we got this new um, artwork, digitally, of course, um, we then sent it to another artist who now has 24 hours to create a new artwork inspired by the first artwork that he or she um, got from us. Now, the thing is, this is how it rolls and rolls and rolls from one artist to another, but the artist who gets um, a work of art to respond to, they only receive one work of art. So they don't know what was the previous one and what was the first word that initiated this entire process. And this is where we get few things. First, we get to see how it evolves and how it rolls. And then the second thing that we get is that we neutralize biases because when we ask some people to do a collaborative work of art which at the end of the day it is because every um 10 artworks that start from one word is for us a chain of works uh, but when people collaborate that they cannot escape biases you see me you see how i sound you see my accent you see the color of my skin i, I assume uh, you know my profession i assume you have something on your mind about who i am that you think um, I am, but uh, if you would only see the work of art that I gave you made by me, I'm not sure you'd have known much about me. And in your response, you may respond differently. So I think this is what we try to do in Rolo. We try to play, we try to keep, create a collaborative work of art when, where, we, uh, where we just um, dismiss uh, possible biases related um, to gender, to um, identity, to um, to whatever. And starting in Israel, we had 200 artists, local artists who loved this project and joined us. And this is when we started our collaboration with the Israeli Foreign Ministry um, to create this kind of dialogue with artists from Israel and from other countries. This is how we made it to Boston with the great initiative uh, by uh, Amir, the um, uh, cultural attache. Amir, can you say hi? Um, I, think he, well, I, I think he's in the audience. Yes. Um, yeah. Every, thank you, Amir, in the chat. And this is how uh, we get to, to work with Michalina and to know her and to share her creative uh, vision with our creative vision and to realize uh, what longing and belonging the subjects. Michalina will probably elaborate a, a little bit more about it uh, next but the meaning in Boston and then the meaning in Israel, because when you think about Israel, Israel is an immigrant country at the end of the day. I was born in Russia. My parents were born in Russia. I know it's not popular to say these days, but none of us has chosen this. Uh, you don't choose where you get born. Um, my partner in life, his parents are from India and from Iraq. Um, this is Israel. It's very diverse. It's multicultural. We have our own uh, hardships in Israel with this. We have our own struggles. We have our own ongoing conversation. And to bring this to the conversation with the questions of belonging and longing in the US and particularly in Boston, I think um, this discourse is only getting started. And this is what this uh, collaborative work of art, where it can get. So thank you everyone um, for, for joining today and please follow Rollo to see where else we will roll um, with this. Well, this is just such an exciting uh, format when you first shared this with us um, and the, the themes that uh, you've chosen initially to uh, uh, show us. We're gonna look at the teasers that, I, that were used to introduce potential artists and others to this series, longing and belonging during the COVID period, clearly very universal topics. And I'm just so uh, really just um, fascinated by this idea that you strip the artists of any biases in the sense of you strip them to the humanity and then ask them to be artists. The thing that they are and do so well and uh, so let's take a look at these first couple of clips just to get a feel of what the prompts were that uh, then led uh, to uh, some of the artwork you're gonna hear about from the artists themselves.
So that's a quickie. We know the attention span you're trying to reach uh, with, with uh, some of the artists. Uh, so we'll pull up the second one as well. Okay, uh, so we've got everybody's attention now. Let's just jump in first with Maclina Gomes. She is a painter, she is a calligrapher, she's a micrographer. And in 2020, she founded a community arts collaborative. Uh, in looking at Maclina's background, her influences come from sixth century Egyptian uh, scribes. And you're gonna see how that inspired her work and how she added to that and what she did with it in this uh, uh, context of Rolla. So Maclina, welcome. Thanks for being with us. Tell us a little about your artwork and, and what you learned and discovered in, in the Rolla process. Uh, thank you so much, Wayne. And let me just say thank you to Amir, uh, Ambassador Rubin, and all of those involved. When uh, the ambassador said that this was a project everyone was working on day and night, that is true. Uh, because we were working in Tel Aviv time, and also, you know, uh, New England, uh, United States time, uh, we had a lot of text messages going back and forth, three o'clock in the morning, sometimes in the evenings, and it became this infant that we were all really trying to nourish. Uh, I had the privilege of working with Anna uh, curating. And I will say this before I dive into my art, um, the conversations we had first were fun. I loved the idea that we could play. So often we forget it's the innocence of play that allows creativity to truly just manifest things we wouldn't have imagined previously. And so I said, oh, I'm on board. I'm ready to play. And I've got some friends that I think will take on this challenge. Um, and I had the privilege of curating, but also uh, the honor of creating the first piece for belonging. And my style of art, as Wayne was saying, is micrography or micro calligraphy. And it's truly storytelling within storytelling. And if you see, oh, there's the image. Um, and so what I did with this piece is I played off of watercolor. When you work with watercolor, you have to release control and allow things to flow. And so once the watercolor was dried, uh, I had to flip it around a few times and just observe, and then decided that I would do this figure of a woman um, with her hands over her heart. Uh, I am a mom, I have three children. So uh, motherhood, uh, family lineage is so important to me when you talk about belonging. Uh, I come from a really beautiful country called Cape Verde. And uh, we have a saying called Mona and it is the longing and belonging of our people because many of us traveled by boat from the Cape Verde Islands to New England. And so we were separated because of industry and learning how to grow a new life in America. And so as I did this piece, the challenging thing was to write about belonging without using the word so that I couldn't give it away. Um, and it was uh, a beautiful, beautiful experience for me to have. And what I will say is I was shocked to see that the blue carried through. Uh, when you look at that chain, you will see that blue come through again and again, all the way almost to the very end. Um, and blue is such a powerful color. It evokes such peaceful emotion. Uh, it reminds us that the water carries us through the storms. And I felt like um, it was just an honor to participate uh, in this entire process from beginning to end. Well, I have to say that you gave um, a, really a, a, a great jump into this. And just so everyone in the audience knows, we're actually going to be looking once we move into our conversation with the artists at all of these chains. There are 10 chains that were created and we're going to play through some of those images after you have a chance 
to hear from um, all of our, our panelists. So uh, stay with us both uh, for the discussion and for uh, you know a smorgasbord of these various uh, uh, creations that evolved from, from uh, the various chains. I wanna move now to Tracy Barbosa. She is the uh, co-owner of Duende Studio. She does some amazing work with glass. And we're going to look at uh, the kind of art glass designs uh, that, that she's created in her own studio. I noticed that uh, sh uh, their studio works with lead certified manufacturers. So I know there's an important uh, agenda attached uh, to the, uh, the company itself and, and the kind of work that they're creating. So uh, Tracy, I know you've got storms around you today in New England and we're hoping for the best, but uh, can you tell us a little bit about your work? In the spirit of Rolo is ping pong back to uh, Israel, uh, where, and we hopefully will be able uh, to, to resume back in the conversation later with Tracy. Eden Caliph, you look like you're just in a Tel Aviv state of mind there. Uh, you're relaxed. You're, uh, uh, you've got these beautiful images behind you. Eden is a visual artist and an owner of a design and tattoo studio. You'll tell us maybe a little bit about the various medium that you work with. You're a graduate of the uh, uh, prestigious Betzalel Academy and um, in vi visual communications. So uh, tell us a little bit about you know, how you first uh, thought about this project and, and how it relates to the kind of work that you like to do. Okay, so thank you everyone who take part of uh, this beautiful project. And actually I have to say, I'm not so relaxed. Maybe I look like I'm really chill, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit excited. So I will try to do it uh, the best, even though English is not my best uh, thing, okay? So yeah, my name is Eden. I'm talking to you from my studio and Basically, I do drawing stuff every day. This is what I'm doing for a living. And this is the final result. But before this final result, actually, it's a nice story because recently, maybe two months ago, I started to be really obsessive with birds. And I started to draw them um, every day in many shapes and many kind of techniques. And I was trying to explore what is the minimum that necessary with lines to create the symbol of a bird. And when I was um, invited to be part of this beautiful uh, game, Rolo, uh, I didn't know what I'm going to get, of course. And I was thinking what I'm going to get and how I'm going to, you know, to react to this. And this uh, feeling of tense um, and to wait and you don't know what you're going to get is actually what bring the inspiration, I think, in my case. And surprisingly, I opened the email and it were birds and uh, I felt really relieved and that it's a sign maybe, I don't know. So I was started to draw many, many birds and I don't know if you can see, but this is the, the, the notebook that I was trying to find out what I'm going to do. And actually Shira, which is a part of the, um, uh, you know, she's a part of the, um, how do you say? Like, uh, she's one of the founder of this project. She was here to get the tattoo. And it was the first time that I was choosing what the customer is going to get as a tattoo and not the, that customer come and choose the, the image, you know? Hmm. So it was really special for me. It was a really special uh, occasion. And uh, I, 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 I sketched some birds 
and then we both look at the bird that's chosen at the end and we knew this is the one and it was really beautiful and simple and yeah and all the process was i don't know with uh, some feeling of uh, i don't want to sound cliche but magic and uh, yeah i was really happy about uh, the result and uh, I'm really honored to, to think that this idea of a game and a play of creation was ended up with a tattoo that is going to last and uh, yeah. And of course, I cannot ignore the, the war in uh, Ukraine and in Rus Russia. And actually it was the first day of war when she was here. And uh, I think it was even without uh, aim to that, it was affected by that, by a bird that carry a flower and flying um, some kind of a peace symbol. And uh, yeah, that was a connection from my side. So when I when I first saw the image and, and, and similarly the image that's on, on the wall just over your shoulder, uh, which I assume is from that same series, um, yeah. it, it is very much speaking to me of, of, about a dove and uh, the the icon of of peace, and that that's so telling. I had no idea that you this was also created around the time of, of the Ukraine war. I should say that uh, we have a very happy customer in the chat whose name is Shira from Tel Aviv. Uh, the <laughs> Shira you're talking about is with us today, so uh, we're excited to have um, your your uh, your, your partner in crime, your other partner in crime in this, who's uh, uh, sharing one of the byproducts of, of Rolo as well. I know yeah. that must be special for you as well. Yeah, it is. All right, well, um, we are excited to show, uh, 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 shortly we'll be showing more from uh, the, the series of, uh, of the, what, what uh, the, the creators are, are calling chains um, so maybe actually that's a good place to come back up top uh, to Anna. Anna, as you are thinking about uh, this period and you described, you know, the, the diversity of Israel, the uh, diversity of, of the artists you're working with in the United States who've talked a little bit about their personal narratives, um, what sort of stood out for you as you saw in real time these works sort of emerging? Uh, as, as a cultural journalist, what were you seeing uh, this process uh, 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 creating before we get to the end products? I, I think I was surprised how it really uh, pushes all of the artists kind of out of their comfort zone. Um, I, I don't think artists have a comfort zone. Um, and I think in a certain way, both journalists and artists in a very different kind of method uh, um, try to say something about, um, about the world. Uh, but when you uh, tell an artist that they only have 24 hours to, to, to create something, I think it's put, it puts a lot of pressure. On the other hand, it really liberates them because an artwork is uh, never finished. Um, and I think, I don't know, Eden, if you, is the representative of the artists here, uh, if you agree, but I think if you would have forever, you could always say, well, this is not good enough. I'll get back to it tomorrow and let me look at this from a different perspective or, or I'm different now and uh, I see differently. Uh, so I think this is what I really love the most. For the Israeli artists, at least, I see that sometimes they kind of change um, the way they work or even change the medium. For instance, one of the artists uh, in this in Boston project, her name is Orit Panini. She's a photographer. Everyone knows her as a photographer. Um, and in her work um, for Rolo, uh, she was doing kind of a collage. So I think we as, as an audience, we learned something new about her. And I think for her, the, the, the knowing that this is a game and we, we allowed her to play, we had 
no expectations in, in a way. You just said like, we give you inspiration and 24 hours. Now it's on you and we trust you, do whatever. And I think uh, that our limitations in Rolo actually really liberates artists. McLean, I see your head almost shaking off your shoulders uh, <laughs> with uh, uh, listening to Anna. Tell us a little bit about what that felt like for you, um, both you know, the pressure as Eden referred to of the 24 hour deadline, as well as the, the sort of uh, what you described as the playtime. And, and why this still remained fun for you? Well, there's definitely that element of a pressure cooker situation, knowing you only have 24 hours to be present. And as artists, you know, um, we are hyper observant and that is our job to be observant, to absorb and then to release and let that artwork come through us. And you have to really get your ego out of the way. At least for myself, I had to let my ego stay away and um, really be true to the art and let it come through. I know other artists that I spoke with, um, they were a little apprehensive or nervous before diving in. And then once they did and they received the image, someone received a song, uh, they were like, this is exactly what I needed. I'm so excited about this. I'll see you later. I'll talk to you in 24 hours. And um, they all had such a positive experience um, tapping into that pressure cooker of being completely present. And it's almost, you know, like a uh, meditation, like everything else needs to stay away and let's just focus on where we are in that moment. Okay, I think we're, um, what I'd love to do is put up some of the images now of, of the chains. And uh, I know each of you will have work that's represented in here. And so Eden, maybe this is an opportunity for you to share a little bit about um, you know, your, your, your own uh, e evolution in this process as you're looking at the images. Uh, uh, but just talk about your, you know, what, what you saw uh, being created and what it meant for you, uh, you know, to be involved in this, you know, before we get, again, before we get to the final product, which you talk a little bit about in your introduction. Um, well, I just saw the last uh, artwork, not this one. I saw the just one artwork before mine, so I can only talk about what I felt when I saw it. This is what you mean? Yeah, go ahead and talk about your own. We're just going to show, while okay. you're speaking, we're going to show our audience a number of different uh, images from, from the partnerships. Yeah, so as like I said before, I was uh, seeing the, the birds and uh, yeah, I was really relieved in a way because there is uh, some, uh, you know, tension like what if I'm going to get something that is really far from what I'm doing in, in usually in general. So yeah, and you never know what was before you in the chain. So you never can compare yourself you can't compare yourself and tell if if you are you know on the good path or you are completely out of it. So there's also an um, effect of surprising that is strong. And this is the image just coming right now after this one. Um, this one, this was the image um, that I saw and then I did the bird. This is Tracy. Um, McLean, as you're looking at these images, what what are you reminded of? Uh, you know, Eden says the surprise factor um, as one aspect of this. Uh, did did you have a sort of similar uh, experience? Uh, what I was so excited about is Anna and I really wanted to find a way where we could have diverse artists just doing the work. And as the work started to pour in, we both were really blown away at their responses um, and how much they truly poured, you know, their energy into this piece. Right there, the one we're looking at, this is uh, Ibrahim Ali Salam. He is a Boston figurative painter. 
he works with um, mostly figurative art. And he received, it was like a digital photo of, it looked like a woman who was wearing a lot of jewelry and a lot of adornment. And he felt like I want to strip away all the adornment and just go straight to the bare bones of this person. Uh, and it, you know, there's so much vulnerability in this piece and strength. And um, as these chord through, you just, you start seeing the depth of who we are in our human experience. And uh, we were able to have a Zoom meeting with um, a good amount of the artists so that they could meet for the first time. And it was so special for them to meet each other, Tel Aviv and Boston, and have exchange about what that process, just as Eden was saying, was like for them. And uh, it just, um, again, goes back to how honored Anna and I are to have been able to participate and curate um, this Rolo project in this way. Uh, so I'm going to jump back to a question um, I see in the chat from Sandra. Uh, uh, and Anna, maybe you can talk to this issue a little bit. The prompts, uh, bearing in mind that your uh, audience are, are not all native English speakers and uh, are, are um, you know, coming from different places, what was the textual aspect of the prompt? Um, did you translate it into different languages for, for different artists? How did that work? Um, and, or was it literally as, as uh, minimalist as a single word for the prompt? It is um, as minimalist um, always uh, when we work. Um, because we want it to be the same for all of the artists. So even if the artists are not uh, native English speakers, we will say the word in English and then we will translate it to Hebrew as a single word or we will explain the meaning. Because I do think um, longing is a very um, unique um, word that in Hebrew you can translate to like five different words in a way. Maybe maybe, maybe a bit less. My, my head is like running, but uh, I'm thinking, okay, gaguim and kmiha is it doesn't mean anything, but together maybe they can be longing. But um, but we used both the word in English um, and um, the word in in Hebrew, and I think this cultural. Um, Difference is what we want to explore because uh, we definitely want to, want to create a dialogue between cultures and we, between artists from different countries and from different cultures. At the same time, um, we just want to see how they respond themselves because of who they are, because of who they are, because of what they bring to the table. So uh, this is why in many ways as a curator, it's really challenging because, you know, when you curate an exhibition at a museum, so you think about what works of art you will see there and where will you hang them and what text will you write about it? So you decide everything and then you build your puzzle from there, your visual puzzle, your contextual puzzle, the, 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 the writings, everything. Uh, here, we just decided on a topic. We choose artists um, through um, some kind of a way. We want them to be diverse from different backgrounds, from different uh, mediums. These are our guidelines, but then this is it. You need to let it go. You choose a word, you give it to the first artist. That's it, you, you never know what you'll get. It's a bit scary. It's fascinating, it's surprising. It's a very interesting lesson for curators of how to let go and how to let the artwork curate kind of itself. So um, it's fascinating. Well, I see that uh, Tracy has not given up on us and we have not given up on Tracy. I see by audio, I, I think we still have Tracy try to call back in. Tracy, any signs of life in New England? <laughs> yes, I'm alive. I'm here. Oh, okay. I'm Good to hear. So go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Tell us a little bit. Um, you were starting to tell us about your studio and your work. Uh, let, 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 let's see how much we can get in. And while you're speaking, we'll, we'll, we'll put up one of the images as well, just so people can uh, uh, get a sense of, of, of the work that you created. Well, thank you, everybody, for sticking with me. Um, yeah, I'm the owner of Duende Studio here in South Coast, Massachusetts, uh, New Bedford. 
and uh, we're a coastal city with a heavy population of Portuguese and Cape Verdean immigrants. Uh, my family <clears throat> was one of those uh, from the Azores, uh, the Atlantic archipelago off the coast of Portugal, and they came as factory workers. And so uh, as a youth, I was imbued with uh, hard work and not just hard work, but a sense of tactile knowledge of how to create and make things and um, and also belonging it it means a lot that whole word means a lot to me as far as this project was concerned um, being an immigrant um, from Portugal and and having that experience of, of connecting and belonging in my own way um, and art of course uh, kind of came up to the top for me as, as one of those things, starting off as da a dancer and ending up going to Mass College of Art and studying glass. And through my glass work is where I've gotten to uh, develop my studio in a way that I consult and design and help people to integrate glass art into their homes and their lives. Uh, public spaces, private spaces. I'm very interested in public art. So Duende Studio is kind of a, a nexus where people can come and be like, how, how can I actually make this in glass? How can this function in this space? Um, so I, I've been working with that along with my own artwork, which is painting on canvas and glass. And uh, Mechalina asked me to come to this project. And uh, the thing that kind of drew me the most to it was the blindness uh, kind of not knowing what was coming at me and not knowing what I was going to do with it. And I really like that part of it because so much of what I do is, is very planned out and, and um, uh, has to be done correctly. So it works with architecture and, you know, my other work is, is a uh, commission work. And so there's this freedom that came with it that I really enjoyed. Um, I, I am a bird. <laughs> I love birds. So when the piece came to me of the blue cake, I kind of didn't even want to look at the title of blue cake. Um, I saw it immediately as a moon. And yeah. for me, belonging is natural. It's, it's nature that helps you belong. So that's kind of where I took off from my piece to from blue moon to my piece of the birds kind of echoing the same shapes as the piece I received. Well, it, it, it's such a, a, a beautiful image that we were looking at. And I'm, I'm so struck by, um, I think uh, McLena mentioned earlier, the, the, the blues that have um, the, the, the richness of the blue colors that evolved um, and have personal meaning uh, for uh, immigrants who came to this country via the ocean and or over, you know, traveling uh, long distances um, in both in Israel and in the United States. Um, and, and so I, I have two questions for you while, while, while we, we've got good audio with you now, um, which is great. Uh, first of all, did you uh, put any of the images onto glass um, at, at, at this point um, or, or, or only on the, uh, you know, sort of graphic design um, the digital graphic design? It was done on paper. Um, this 24 hour timeline was like sure. not friendly with glass. <laughs> so um, I, I took it as just this complete free place to do something that was light duty. Uh, although all of my work, whether it's on paper or canvas or glass, has to do with layers and lots of uh, continuous layers that echo each other um, that may seem like a like a reverberation. Uh, so I took the imagery of blue cake and I repeated it digitally and then printed that out and then did watercolor and painting on top of it. Well, it is uh, a, a, a beautiful multimedia piece. And the fact that um, 
someone is wearing it on their arm now and some people have it up mm -hmm. on their walls and some of uh, our folks are seeing it for the first time today and commenting uh, you know on, on just how 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 you know beautiful um, uh, your your work really is um, I want to ask the, the second question I want to actually ask all, all the all the panelists to briefly comment on it's something that Anna mentioned uh, at the very beginning um, and and particularly since uh, people have referred to their own, uh, roots and and their own stories uh, that obviously is is told in the, in, in in your artwork. Um, we're we're living in a time where uh, bias has not been eliminated, and uh, people do come sometimes and make judgments about people based on their gender, their gender identity, their color, their religion, their ethnicity, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what in this project struck you that allowed you to deal with bias in some way, um, either overcoming it or looking past it, or uh, uh, what you know? What 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 to you, as someone who perhaps has been the target of various biases at times, how did you relate to to working with someone who you knew nothing about? how they looked, what their politics were, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I think in a way it's a good question for the artists themselves because we as curators um, chosen to choose the artist and we know um, who they are. Um, but I have to say, I think um, that in Israel, um, there is a different approach to biases because I. I it's even kind of hard to, to, to translate the word, not because there isn't a word in Hebrew for biases, of course, uh, but because I think in certain ways, um, it's more talked about in the US. And sometimes the discourse in Israel um, starts in the US and then it's, it comes here. And sometimes it's just different because the issues we have here is, are not um, the same there. And I think forcing ourselves to deal with it as curators, as co-founders of an art initiative makes us talk about it more, make us prioritize it more, makes us understand where is it that we want to go in this um, identical uh, politics and all, all of these subjects. And I think it's a very good mirror that we are putting uh, in front of our eyes. Great. Um, so let so let's hear from the artists as well. Tracy, did you uh, uh, how how did you relate to the issue of bias in this sort of blind uh, exercise? Um, I am probably hard pressed to be biased on many occasions, and I I felt like it was really freeing not to know anything mm -hmm. about the artist or what was coming at me. Um, I, I found that absolutely wonderful and liberating and, and in itself, you know, you, you can't have any bias that way. It's just, it's just there and you have one word and the bias, all the bias is in yourself. Like the bias is in my, um, my process, you know, like how do I usually go about creating things? And it tells me more about myself in that I stuck with this blue and white that to me is also a symbol of um, the blue and white tiles that you see all around the world um, that come from Portuguese culture, that come from Middle Eastern culture, that are in South America, they're, they're everywhere. And so that color combination to me is unity. Eden, um, blue and white has a special meaning in Israel, obviously. Uh, uh, did it surprise you that um, what emerged from uh, a, a cake, a blue cake? And, uh... <laughs> to be honest, I, I didn't connect the, the colors to the flag, I guess is what you mean. Uh, I, I didn't come in mind for me. Uh, it was just a uh, blue, beautiful color. This is uh, one of my colors that I use. And uh, yeah, I was really connected to this color by my feelings, but not by any connection to Israel or to anywhere else. 
And uh, about the bias thing, I just agree with what was saying. Um, yeah, I, it's really special to receive something anonymous. McLena, uh, uh, you mentioned that you're 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 dodging your uh, uh, child's toys under your feet before. Um, is there anything about this process that you learned about that you think could actually be um, uh, taught, shared, or utilized by young people to maybe learn about how to deal with difference and, and biases uh, beyond just what, what, you know, sort of professional artists uh, experienced here? Absolutely, uh, it's exactly what my nonprofit does. Uh, community art collaborative, uh, just like Anna, we were looking at ways of feeling less isolation and I created an opportunity. It was an invitation for anyone uh, in Plymouth, Massachusetts to create art on a honeycomb shape, mail it back in, and then we made public art installations all over the town of Plymouth. And uh, the last one we did had over 1400 honeycombs of art. And a majority of that came from school children. And you saw the diversity of, you know, what were the things that helped them get through the pandemic. And when you come together in a collective way, um, it's a play on the micro and the macro. So there's this macro, like the chain, seeing all 10 pieces of a chain is the macro of the art that happened. And then the micro is each individual artist's contribution. And when we start approaching conversations about diversity, inclusion, acceptance, um, we have to kind of take this approach of looking at the micro and the macro. Um, it's my hope that my children are inspired uh, by art. I think art is a vehicle for change. Um, it's kind of that invisible thread that can connect things that other people might feel is impossible to connect. Um, looking at all the artists that participated in Rolo, we're all coming from diverse backgrounds. Uh, we're all coming from different perspectives. We've all had to deal with some type of bias. And in this moment, none of those things were the focal point. The focal point was the art. Um, and so that is liberating, it's empowering. Um, and then for us to have the cultural exchange uh, it's so important for us to build relationships with other creatives so that we can continue to build these conversations and let this grow um, and roll, keep rolling on um, and looking at ways of, you know, art right now is a hot topic. Everyone is very excited about it. Uh, you go to any city that's emerging and you're going to see street art and you're going to see art in coffee shops and you're going to see art everywhere which is fantastic, we're excited about that. But we're also more excited about how are we changing the conversation? How are we moving that dial forward to go, there's more to us in our human experience. We can find new conversations and new ways to connect with each other um, and find new avenues for peace and for growth uh, because so many people are hurting and so many people um, are, literally trying to save their lives right now. Um, and if art is one of those vehicles that can help uh, for us to look at some new dialogue and look at some new ways to bridge our human experience together, uh, I think we're hopefully moving in the right direction. Uh, Anna, one of our uh, viewers is asking the question, how did you choose these amazing artists? Uh, 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 because what we've heard today and what we've seen um, really speaks for itself. But before you got to the prompts, you had to have the right people who were willing to be blindfolded, um, uh, among other uh, uh, parameters that you gave them. So can you maybe just share with us a little bit about how you found everybody and, and, um, and maybe just what you see a little bit about the future of the project going forward? Yeah, so I, I kind of remember now when you're asking this question, our, our first uh, conversation with Michalina, when the, the main thing that we had to agree upon or, or to understand is that our um, artists must be bold and there must be um, easygoing. 
And people that when you'll, when you'll say, okay, you're going to have 24 hours, you're going to be blindfolded, you're going to respond to an artwork of an artist, you will not know who they, who they are. And they, they, their response should be, wow, I love it. That's great. I'm in. So this is a very important criteria. Uh, I think mainly, as, as I already mentioned, it is important for us uh, for the artists to be from different backgrounds, uh, from the Israeli um, society, so then the perspective that they bring to the table can, can be um, diverse. And also it is important for them to be from different mediums so uh, that we can see how it evolves. I really love in the project when we see a painter response to, an, to a glass artist. It's very interesting. One of the artists uh, was a pastry chef. This is a, like an, an actual cake. It was edible. Unfortunately, I didn't get to eat it and taste it, but like it's a, it's a real cake and this is his form of art. So I think uh, it's endless. And I, I always try to, to look for the people who are more innovative, more brave, love to play um, and, and join us um, in, this, in this game. And because we are already running with this project for two years now, so we also um, always looking for new participants um, to, to join and for people who are, um, I wouldn't say emerging artists, but uh, Rolo for us serves also as a stage. Um, so we want to give the stage to Israeli artists and to to make them more known and to spread uh, their work um, their work of art. So this is about this the future of the project. Rollo, as its name, has already rolled for 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 in different countries, and it was uh, it was a great journey so far. And we're looking forward to see where Rollo will take us on its own because this is how somehow Rollo tends uh, tends to work. People hear about us and want to join and want to play. Um, so uh, we will continue collaborating with more uh, countries, I believe, more embassies, um, and hopefully uh, we want to expand uh, to expand this partnership and to get to know more more organi or art organizations, more educational um, organizations, uh, even private organizations to join us as long as. Uh, they would like to increase um, and encourage creativity and encourage the war on biases and anyone who relates to this um, core values that we that we share. And of course, if anyone on the call um, finds uh, themselves related, so we're here. And we also put a link for the project on the chat because Rollo is basically a huge gallery. So you can join and um, see Eden's work and Tracy's work and Michalina's work and all of the project and other project on our uh, website. Well, Anna, that is just a, a, a perfect uh, um, a closing for the project. I can see comments uh, uh, already coming in about uh, interest in collaborations in, in other communities as well, uh, and other parts of the world, other communities. So really, I think this is something that, um, as we've heard from, from Tracy, from Eden, from McLena, uh, very concrete examples about how relations were built, about how art was built, about how uh, 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 we, we've learned some things about overcoming biases that may actually be teachable, that may actually be scalable, that may actually be worth sharing um, and are frankly not that expensive to do uh, um, by allowing people to uh, collaborate even when they're not in physical proximity with one another. Uh, what an incredible uh, uh, project and, and, and thank you for bringing it to us. A special shout out to our friends at the uh, uh, Consul General in New England, Amir Tadmore Kapayim. Uh, thank you for, for bringing this amazing uh, group uh, together uh, for us. Ambassador Rubin, uh, your smile was well. Uh, earned and uh, you have something to fell about. Um, this indeed was a, a great example of what it means to connect creative people in uh, both of our countries. It's, it's something where we, we uh, are, are both really gifted and privileged to have immigrants and diversity and freedom of expression to allow our artists to build and create and inspire. And at this moment, um, coming out of hopefully or somewhere in the process of a pandemic, answering the question of longing and belonging is something that we need artists 
more than anyone to help us, you know, sort of understand how we get through it, why we get through it, and um, inspire us by, by showing us we can connect with someone we know nothing about. And that really is, is really a signature to your project. So we thank you all for being with us. We thank everyone in our audience. We remind everyone, come back to us next week. Uh, we will go geopolitics. There's a lot going on in the world at the moment. We have Ambassador Dennis Ross, uh, who will uh, be with us in conversation. We hope you'll be back with us next Wednesday. That is on April the 13th. Everyone, have a safe week. Lahitra, shalom.